at a time when Hollywood is making live action remakes of my favorite cartoons that I grew up watching. Like, uh, no, no, wait, they tried to turn that into a live action show? That doesn't even make any sense. They even turned this into a bland and generic action movie? You know what? Maybe Hollywood should not touch the subject of today's video. Yes, I'm talking about Alpha Teens on Machines, a French animated action series that had a diverse cast of fun teenage heroes, a great villain, and amazing action sequences. So why did it only last for two seasons before getting cancelled and being forgotten? What do I mean by being forgotten? Well, I mean, I've searched on YouTube and I have not found a channel that has given this show its flowers, so I'll be the first. Disclaimer, if there is a channel that has already spoken about the show, I'm sorry, but I choose to believe in my own delusions. <gasps> okay, this is my ATOM retrospective. Come on, team, gear it up! Adam, for all action episodes, one explosive DVD, out now! ATOM was created by Arian... Uh, sorry, I can't pronounce that. And Paul Patrick Duval. It was a co-production between Jetix Europe and SIP Animation. It launched in 2005 with its last episode from its second season airing in 2007. The show follows five teenagers, Axel, King, Lioness, Hawk, and Shark. They are originally recruited by Janice Lee, the owner of Lee Industries, to test vehicles and gadgets for his company. But when the notorious criminal, Alexandra Payne, who has a connection with Axel, escapes from prison, the gang uses the technology to put a stop to Payne and his crew. Let's go back to the beginning. So originally the show was pitched as The Insiders, according to a press release by Jetix Europe. With the current working title of The Insiders, this animated series features a rebellious team of unlikely action heroes and is designed to appeal to boys aged 6 to 9. The series will follow the adventures of one of the young heroes who has the task of tracking down and catching hundreds of the worst villains and the mastermind who set them free from prison, the notorious Mr. Payne. Firstly, I'm glad that they changed the name to ATOM because the insiders does not sound right for the show. Secondly, they changed the plot because originally they were supposed to stop a hundred villains and they changed it to only Payne and his gang with a sprinkle of a few one-time villains, which is also a great change because it allows the story to be more focused. It is also clear that Axel was supposed to be the only one going after the villains before they changed it to involve the whole team. Now, Axel is still the main character as his conflict with pain and his need to avenge his father's death drives the story, but the team is actively involved in helping the people of Landmark City and stopping pain. What was obvious about the show, besides being cool, was that it was made to sell toys. Jetix Europe had partnered with Hasbro to make the toys. The interim CEO of Jetix Europe said at the time, we're extremely pleased to have secured the involvement of one of the leading children's toy and game manufacturers in bringing this new property to our audience. This agreement is a significant step in the creation of the insiders as a global franchise. I mean, teenagers testing cool cars and gadgets and the cars can transform? I'm not complaining. Most cartoon shows were made to sell toys. And just like the tragic cancellation of shows like Teen Titans, this may explain why this show eventually got cancelled. But we'll come back to that later. First, let's look at the team, the villains, and the storylines between season 1 and season 2. Spoiler warning, if you have not watched the series yet, I highly recommend that you check it out. Oh, you still here? Okay, let's go. Let's go! Axel Manning is the leader of the team. He's cool, smart, athletic, and practices a form of fictional martial arts called Jolan. Jolan is like a superpower as it allows him to release the burst of energy that he uses to push his opponents backwards. And man, I love the sound they make whenever he uses Jolan. 
as stated before, Axel has history with the main villain as he believes that Payne is responsible for his father's death. Or is he? Dang, dang, dang. Okay, sorry. Axel's goal at the beginning of the show is to avenge his father and to save the city from Payne and his gang. Axel's internal struggle is regret. He blames himself for his father's death, believing that if he had told his father about Payne's suspicious actions, he would still be alive. Axel also struggles to open up to the team about his past and would at times go to certain missions by himself, but the team is always there to have his back. Cray Kingston, also known as King, he is the muscle of the group and he is also really smart and tech savvy as the team depends on him to hack into any system. He loves four things, wrestling, animals, food and his younger brother who is a genius. Catalina Leon or Lioness. She is the level-headed member of the group. She is Brazilian, so her fighting style incorporates Afro-Brazilian martial arts known as Capoeira. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing it right. She's fast, agile, and has reflexes of a cat, just like her name implies. It is shown that she has a crush on Axel, as she tends to be the one that helps Axel to open up about his past, and is the one that stops him from killing pain at the end of season 1. Zack Hawks, also known as Hawk, is by far my favorite character. Hawk is the comic relief and he is funny. At the beginning of the series, Hawk doesn't want to join the team because he's pursuing an acting career, but he eventually changes his mind to help save the day. Hawk is a wannabe actor and ladies man, but he is terrible at both and that's what makes him such a great and funny character. Just like his name implies, he specializes in anything that has to do with flying. Planes, jets, you name it, he can fly it. And the last member of the group, Oli Shaka. What's with this obvious names? Well, if you haven't guessed it, Shark loves the ocean, especially surfing. He's the least developed character in the show. I mean, his whole personality is that he's a chilled surfer dude. Now, don't let his exterior fool you. He's a skilled fighter and has been shown to have impressive leadership qualities. So if anything happens to Axel, Shark can definitely step up. The supporting characters include Janice Lee, who is the owner of Lee Industries. He is the person who puts the team together. Now, we'll come back to Mr. Lee as he plays an important role in the second season. So for now, just know that he is our hero's boss. And rounding off the supporting characters is Garrett. He's a young super genius who works for Mr. Lee. He builds the machines that the team uses on their missions. Hit the attack button and bad dudes, they're walking and we're slamming to the moon. Atom Slammer from Action Man, test it out. In the first season, there are three main villains in the show. Alexander Payne, Spider and Flash. There's also Dragon, who's not really a villain, but more of an anti-hero, but we'll come back to him also. The rest are ones of villains that come and go, like Magnus, who's Payne's daughter, the Cannonball Brothers, who are a circus act, Dr. Recombo, who combines DNA of different creatures, Dr. Eel, who controls sea creatures, Optical, who uses holographic technology to become anybody, The Mess, who is a former wrestler who speaks in rhymes and has a crush on Lioness, and we also have the Omega team. Get it? Cause Alpha and Omega? Well, they are essentially a copycat team that cannot obviously beat the original. I will focus on the VIPs, Pain, Spider and Flash. Fun fact, they are voiced by the voice actors of Spongebob, Mr. Krabs and Patrick Star. Imagine those three as a villain team. Spider and Flash are pain goons. They are the comic relief as they are constantly being berated by Pain for failing to take out the team and he uses his pain powers when they annoy him. Spider is the smart one whose design is inspired by Dr. Octopus and Flash is the dumb one who is all muscle but no brain. The main villain is Alexandra Payne. He is one of my favorite cartoon villains. His design, his voice is so menacing and it just works. Ah, the gift of higher education. 
<laughs> Just like his name implies, pain is in a lot of pain. But he can transfer his pain to another person by simply touching them. And he uses his power a lot to terrify his victims. Let's look at season 1 by focusing on the major storylines, character development, and the shocking ending that caught me and I'm sure many fans off guard. No way! It's gonna be me! Huh? Why is it gonna be you? Because I'm the good guy. Yeah. To win one of these Atom action figures, watch the new series of Atom every Saturday and Sunday. So the first episode begins with Janus Lee recruiting the team, but Alexander Payne escapes from a triple maximum prison with the help of Spider. Axel instantly recognizes Payne and goes to confront him. When he is asked about his past with Payne, he refuses to open up. Axel catches up to Payne and a great car chase sequence occurs. But Payne overpowers Axel and drives him off the road. Pain captures Axel and now the two come face to face. Axel believes that Pain set off the bomb that killed his father and wants revenge. A fight ensues as Axel uses his jawline but Pain manages to get the upper hand. The team manages to find Axel and save him from Pain. So Payne's goal is to take over Landmark City. I mean, it's the classic villain goal. The first few episodes consist of Payne trying to take over the city whilst the team stops him. In the fifth episode, we are introduced to Silas Green, also known as the Architect. He is a throwaway villain who used to work for Mr. Lee. The one interesting thing about the Architect is that at the end of the episode, when he is captured, he says, Lee will betray you just as he did me. Don't believe a word he says. No one takes him seriously but his words foreshadow what will be revealed at the end of season one after failing to take out the team pain hires dragon a ninja who is also a master of joe Lan. dragon becomes our hero's toughest opponent he manages to capture axel and brings him to pain but eventually helps axel when he finds out that he is the son of sebastian manning now when i was young i thought that ninja was axel's father given that he is a master of joe Lan and he helps axel out episode 10 introduces magnus who is pain's daughter and like her name suggest she has magnetic powers. Magnus flirts with Axel and tries to separate Lioness from the team since Lioness is the one that is suspicious about her. But the truth eventually is revealed and Axel fights her. I always felt that Lioness should have been the one that fights Magnus it would have made more sense to me. Episode 18 introduces us to the Omega team, who are hired by Pain to take out our heroes. And even though they succeed at first, the Alpha team eventually defeats them. The only reason I'm mentioning this episode is because Flash says one of the funniest lines in the show. Let's fight fire with fire. Yeah! Wouldn't it be better to fight it with water? Ah, <gasps> uh, I love Flash. In episode 22, Axel gets poisoned with water spider venom, but he uses his jawline training to slow down the effects of the poison as the team looks for a cure. In his weakened state, Axel asks Shark to lead the team. This is where they show us the leadership qualities of Shark, and this will be explored again in season 2 when Shark gets a head injury that makes him think he's an army leader. In episode 23, Dragon returns. He works with Axel and even saves his life. My suspicions of Dragon being Axel's father increased because at the end, Axel says, Hey, that move you did to disarm Yao? I thought my father was the only one who knew how to do it. He was. But for now, there's still no evidence. In episode 26, the season finale, it is the anniversary of Axel's father passing away in the hands of Pain. And Axel is determined to take Pain out. So Axel goes out by himself to put an end to Pain and his gang. He manages to get Flash arrested, but this is where Axel feels out of character. As he goes from this fun hero to an angry person who is determined to put an end to Pain, even if it means splitting up the team. Remember, I formed this team. Now maybe it's time to unform it. Here. If you decide not to come back, at least you'll have the memories. 
We have been shown that Axel has opened up to the team and even considered them as his family. But for him to go through an attitude change and push his family away due to his obsession with pain negates any development that he went through. But I understand his anger and determination to put an end to pain. And just like every time he pushes the team away, they eventually come back to help him. This leads to Axel and Payne facing each other for the last time and Payne says something interesting. I may have wanted him out. But I didn't detonate that bomb. Yes, Payne is innocent. I mean, he's guilty of other crimes, but not killing Axel's father. However, Payne doesn't know who actually did it. So out of anger and frustration, Axel hits Payne with a super jawline, creating this iconic image. Oh, that was so cool. And as he's about to finish him off, Lioness stops him and brings him back to reason. The series ends with Payne and Spider getting arrested. But wait, there is more. It turns out that Janice Lee, yes, the man who put together this team, was the villain all along, and he has created mutated clones of the team. Genetic engineering. When Lee mixes Adam DNA with animals, he creates the awesome new team. Guys, Say hello to your clones. Season 2 is a bit of a letdown compared to the first season. Now, don't get me wrong, it still has great action set pieces and fun character dynamics. The problem with season 2 is Janice Lee and his Mew team. I, I still don't get it. Why? Axel, Tillian is the future. The start of a breed of super beings who will one day keep mankind from destroying itself. Don't you see? We have a chance here to save the world. That was the very reason I formed the team in the first place. So I could start with the best of the best, then use your DNA to make humanity even better. Lee as a villain just does not work. I mean, look at him. He doesn't even look like a threat. And they really tried to make him look menacing with this camera angle, but it doesn't work. And if you think he's the worst, let me tell you about the Mew team, which consists of Tillian, Wrecker, Firecat, Stingfly, and Razor. They are supposed to be the better versions of our heroes, but they are definitely not. They are beaten from one episode to another and we're expected to see them as a threat? How? It's like watching the Omega team getting beaten for a whole season. This made me miss Pain, Spider and Flash. And yes, Spider and Flash were equally as incompetent as the Mew team, but they were at least funny and had their own personalities. And you can't even compare Mr. Lee and Pain. <laughs> Diamonds just aren't you, Dragon. Show that excellent stuff by to Dragon. Atom from Action Man. But before we go there, let's start with the positives. The action set pieces are still incredible. They have incorporated 3D animation, especially with the city landscape and new vehicles. They also delve into some of the characters' backstories. In episode 6, we are introduced to King's younger brother Duke, who is a child genius. We are shown how King is overprotective of his brother to a fault, but learns to trust his brother and not be so overbearing. What movie are we gonna see? <laughs> That's a no-brainer, right? Still fast and unbelievable. Furious four. In episode 11, we are introduced to Lioness's father, who is a famous musician that was absent throughout her life. She wants nothing to do with him, but Axel encourages her to give him a chance. Maybe you ought to give him a chance. Axel, you know what it's like as a kid when the only way to see your father is to turn on the music channel? If there was any way that I could see my dad again, I'd take it. Look, you still got a chance to work things out. Wait, why didn't these two end up dating? Anyways, um, Lioness manages to work things out with her father at the end. In episode 18, we are introduced to Hawk's father, who is essentially a has-been actor who's trying to get back into the industry. This shows us where Hawk's drive to be an actor comes from, and his dad is definitely as funny as him. 
the only character who gets the short end of the stick in terms of development is Shark. They don't even bother to develop him at all. Another great thing is that they reveal what I have been suspecting since season 1 and that is the fact that Dragon is Axel's father. Whoa! Well, he's technically a clone of Axel's father that was made by Janice Lee. The last positive thing about season 2 is the fact that Pain returns but only for one episode. And you know what? It is the best episode of season 2. So while Spain is in his prison cell, he receives a mysterious gift that is a picture of him and Sebastian Manning and a symbol of a snake eating its tail. This frightens Payne and he calls for assistance from Axel to help him survive an incoming attack. Axel has to trust Payne and work with him so that he can find out the truth about what happened to his father. And yes, Payne tries to run away at the end, but he is caught before he can do so. Hey, you can't blame me for trying. Thank you. You saved my life. Your father would have been proud. Payne also gives Axel a picture of his father and a mysterious man and tells Axel that the mysterious man knows what happened to his father. And that mysterious man turns out to be Janice Lee. So why do I have beef with Mr. Lee being the main villain? Well, because in the season finale, Lee reveals that he is not the mastermind that got Axel's father killed. I took money from an international criminal syndicate, The Serpent's Tail in exchange for government cloning secrets. Your father caught me. I offered him anything to keep quiet. He refused. He was about to expose everything. But the serpent's tail found out, and they would stop at nothing to protect their investment, including sacrificing your father and his partner. But he was working for the man that did. And that man is Quan, the leader of the Serpent's Tail organization. Quan is a better villain than Lee because he is a real threat that actually poses a major challenge to the team. And he actually reveals that Axel's father is still alive. And he is the mastermind that caused all these events to take place. So why is he only in two episodes? and the rest of the season is given to Lee and his team of losers? Well, that's because they were planning on making Quan the villain of season 3, so we leave season 2 with a cliffhanger that never got resolved and will probably never ever get resolved because the show got cancelled. This is because the company was losing money and I guess the toy sales and viewership numbers had declined so it made no sense to greenlight another season. The company was eventually bought by Disney, of course. So Disney, please bring back ATOM. And that was the sad end of ATOM Alpha Teens on Machines. Oh wait, there was a PlayStation 2 game that was released in 2007 called Action Man ATOM. And the less we talk about that disaster, the better. So even though I was not the biggest fan of the second season, I still treasure this show. It was a childhood favorite of mine and it still holds up when I rewatched it for this video. It had a diverse cast, fun action set pieces, a great villain, well, in the first season. It combined humor and action to tell a compelling story about five teenagers from different backgrounds who are brought together to help people whilst having fun along the way. I am sad that the creators never got to conclude their story and I'm also glad that they got to bring us the greatest action series of all time in my eyes. Thank you to everyone who worked on the show and I hope that one day they can get the opportunity to give the show a proper send off. And if not, maybe... <coughs> A certain fan can rise up the ranks <coughs> and revive the show. <coughs> I'm talking about me <laughs> in my dreams. <laughs> well, guys, that's all for today's video. I hope you like it. And please tell me who are some of your favorite characters, villains, or moments that happened in the show. Thank you.